So, we're a couple of days into the new year, and if you look at any Linux news channels or Linux uh, websites which give you bits of news, what you might have seen around the new year is the typical is this going to be the year of the Linux desktop, i.e. 2025. But I noticed another thing, and this probably happened around Windows XP, Windows 8, and well, maybe others in the past, but Windows 10 will no longer receive updates, of course, this year, 2025. And so there is speculation that there will be a, a huge wave of Windows, former Windows users going to Linux and it will be the year of the Linux desktop. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I don't think it necessarily will be. And in a way, this video is not going to be about that. But it made me think, what is the actual state of somebody going from Windows 10 to Windows... Uh, sorry, Windows 10 to Linux. Now, of course, you can, I believe, now technically upgrade Windows 10 to 11 on older hardware. But um, I think Microsoft are basically dissuading people to do it, saying, oh, it won't get updates. I'm not sure. I know this whole TPM module thing has been very controversial. So we're assuming there's going to be some migration of some people from Windows 10 to Linux. Now, what I'm going to do today, therefore, is we're going to do some um, role play or let's say cosplay. Actually, let's not say cosplay because that's all the wrong connotations. I hate that word. Anyway, whatever. So we're going to role play a Windows 10 user on older hardware like this ThinkPad, right? Um, going over to Linux Mint, the cliche, the obvious going from Windows 10 to Linux Mint to get that Windows-ish experience on Linux. So um, let's just role play. I'm going to be Bob. Bob's going to be maybe in his uh, late 40s, early 50s. And um, he's been told he can't upgrade to Windows 11 or basically it's not worth upgrading to. So he's been looking on the internet and he's got himself Linux Mint. He's downloaded the ISO, he's flashed it to a USB and he's booted up to it and this is what it looks like to Bob. So look at the screen. So I'm in my virtual machine, as you can see, using Linux Mint. Um, before we do this, what I will say as well is I want to have an honest perspective here. This isn't just looking for what programs are on a Linux Mint and how they compare to Microsoft programs. No, put yourself in Bob's shoes. What would Bob actually do when he loads up uh, the Linux Mint ISO <clears throat> before he might install it? What is he thinking? What is he doing? So let's be honest about this. Let's be truthful. This is the mindset we need to have. Okay, so you're in Linux Mint. Now it all looks familiar. So Bob's very, very happy. It looks sort of familiar. You can see these things down here. Terminal, Firefox, web browser. What is this, 2003, Bob is thinking. And files, all standard. Now he goes into internet because he's looking for, he's looking for Google Chrome. Don't convince yourself otherwise. We know what Bob is like. He's looking for Google Chrome. He cannot see Google Chrome. So what do you do? You load up the Firefox web browser to install Google Chrome. Chrome is what every um, Microsoft user is doing. They open up Edge to install Google Chrome. We're going to do the same. So once this loads, any moment now. Right. And we don't care about this. Bob does not care about this. What Bob wants is he wants Google Chrome. He does not care about this. So, okay, let's um, put in Google Chrome. Bob's getting very impatient now. He's not sure about this whole Linux thing. Okay, let's get Google Chrome. So we want to, it's looking good though. We've got the web page. Now, Bob doesn't necessarily know that everything works, he just kind of knows that what he wants is going to work, right? And he wants the first thing, because this is where Bob's going to spend most of his life, in Google Chrome. Come on, come on. Okay, download Google Chrome. Now, the first thing Bob's going to see is Ubuntu, Debian, 
what the hell, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, I'm on Linux Mint. He doesn't know about distributions, he has no idea, he's just going to see, get Chrome for Linux, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, whatever. Let's accept and install. Okay. Something's happening, let's open up a new thing. Oh. Okay, so here we go, we're downloading Chrome. So this this is going to download, and Bob's Bob's optimistic. Bob's optimistic there. He knows he's going to be spending his life in Google Chrome. Will it work? Okay, he's hit this button here. He's hoping it does something. He's hoping it does something. Ooh, I want that. Let's go back into here. Is it going to do something? Bob's getting impatient now. Of course, he's not using a virtual machine. Oh, what's this? Something's happening. Something's happening. Oh, oh we see something. Okay. Looks simple enough. Bob's going to hit install. What's the worst that could happen? So... Bob's sitting there thinking, okay, it's installing. And what else do I need to think about? Well, what are, what other programs is he going to have natively installed? Because remember, Bob's thinking everything is pretty much um, through the Google Chrome web browser. That's where he spends his life. You know, it's funny. People sort of think about, you know, GNU slash Linux, because you can't have Linux with, without GNU, right? Well, really, Microsoft now is really Google slash Microsoft, because really what people use Microsoft for is just to install Google Chrome web browser, right? It's, that's right. And of course, ironically, they can use Edge and have a Google Chrome, well, they can have a Chromium web browser, right? Okay, so this is looking promising. It's saying finished. So does that mean Google Chrome is installed? So we have a, the other thing we need to think about, Bob's thinking, ah, I can't use any other Office suite except for Microsoft. So we're going to have a look for Microsoft 365 because I've got to have my um, uh, whatever. So it's looking good. So what have we got here? So Bob can't see it down here. So he knows if he goes internet, there we go. We've got Google Chrome now. We've got Google Chrome. This is looking good. Bob is, Bob is getting happier. What's this? Key ring? An application wants to create a crinkle default could choose the password. Well, simple enough. Bob understands this. Let's put in Bob. Bob for the key ring because Bob is Bob. Okay, so uh, yeah, of course we want it. Of course we want it default, and we want to give. Of course we want to give Google everything, every bit of information about us because this is. What's the difference, right? Come from Microsoft. Okay, now we would normally sign in, but Bob's just going to check. Bob's Bob's still a bit suspicious. He's not sure about this Linux thing, so, okay, and he's like, oh, what is this? So he's trying to make it full screen, oh, okay, whatever, yep, yeah. uh, add privacy, how ironic, whatever. We've, Bob thinks that's a good thing, Google knows what it's doing, okay, yep, yeah, got it, whatever. Look at this, Bob's got Google, so now he knows he can just log in, he can log in and he can get Google Gmail, because he's going to have a Gmail account, maybe an Outlook account. So what's next for Bob? Bob's like, hmm, so I know what I need to check. I need to check um, how how can I get into Facebook? Does Facebook work on Linux? Does Facebook work? Well, of course, it's in the web browser. Bob is pleased. Bob is pleased. And he's probably got, uh, probably got Twitter or X. So is it X? I hope this is right. Yeah, so he's got X. Perfect. Bob is very pleased. He knows he can log in. He can do all of his... His usual social media stuff, Bob is very happy. So the next thing Bob's like, ah, oh, okay, now what if I, after I've read my socials, I need to do some work. So I need to get Microsoft 365. So how can I get Microsoft 365, right? Can I download this? Can I download this? Okay, Bob's looking, he's, he's going to the login page. Ah, login page. Oh, I just want to download it. Sign in, get... Okay, get Microsoft 365 because you just, just, you know, let's be honest, Windows users have all that stuff packaged. They're just going to log in from the client side. They're not going to log it or from a, from the package side. They're not going to go on the web browser necessarily. Oh, sign me up. No, no. 
but it's not looking promising here. Bob's like, oh, where's where's the download, man? Where's the download? Okay, how can I download Microsoft 365 on Linux Mint? Bob's Bob's a bit worried now. He's a bit worried. He doesn't necessarily want to use it online. He doesn't want necessarily set up a virtual machine. Bob's like, no way am I doing that. How to install on Linux Mint? Oh, now he's found a Microsoft community on Linux. Is possible. Is possible. Bob's optimistic. Microsoft says it's true. It's true. Okay, I have a question. Is it possible to install Microsoft 365 on Linux Mint? Thank you for reaching out to us. I am blessing an independent advisor. Microsoft, sorry to inconvenience, but Office desktops do not support the Linux operating system. You can only use Microsoft Office on Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, or iOS and the web. You can choose Office Online. Now, Bob's probably thinking, mm, this is not great, but I will do that. I will go on that. Microsoft say you can use it online. Now, we know that I think online you have less functionality. Maybe it's not too bad if you've got an account. So Bob is just going to use Office Online because with his personal computer, it's not too much of a deal. If he's got his work computer, that's where all the office office stuff lives. He just needs to write a few documents. And he's like, well, I've used Google before, of course, Google Docs is fine. For my personal use, it's fine. So it's looking okay for Bob. So next, what is Bob thinking? Okay, the next thing I need to download is, my, I need my Spotify. Spotify. And we're just gonna go Spotify on Linux. So let's have a look. Can he get Spotify on Linux? Oh. Now it says it's a Ubuntu thing again. Oh, Spotify on Linux. Yeah, it's looking good. So Spotify in the Ubuntu Software Center. I haven't got Ubuntu Software. Command line, Bob's not going to do that. Bob is not going to be doing that. What about if he searches? What if he searches in his thing, Spotify? Not looking good. So what is Bob thinking? Well, he can use the online one. He knows he, he knows there's the web browser version. Hmm, hmm, what's he gonna do? Okay, let's try on Linux Mint. Uh, is Spotify available on Linux Mint? There are several, uh-uh. Oh, he's got a reader guide, he's got a reader guide. You can download Spotify on Linux Mint thanks to this. Okay, so this is looking promising. Uh, software manager. He doesn't know what software manager is. Uh, web browser. Okay. Now, he's just I think, well, okay, it's fine. I use a web browser for everything. I'm just going to use it through the web browser. So, you know, his music's kind of sorted. I mean, if, let's just um, sidestep. Uh, role playing bot for a minute. Of course, you can you can get it through the software center or wherever that is. Um, is it software? Software manager. You can you can download something, right? So okay, Bob's like okay. I've got my um, I've got my Microsoft sorted. I've got my Google Chrome sorted. I've got my uh, Spotify. Of course, it's all through the web browser. Of course, so Bob's just living through like he did pretty much through the web browser. So it's like, hmm, what else is there? Well, of course, he, Bob wants to know if he can watch Netflix. Yeah. So let's find out. Can I watch Netflix on Linux Mint? Oh, yes, you can. You just need to enable DRM in the browser settings. Bob likes this. So... Bob knows he is sorted for the rest of um, his life using his old ThinkPad. He's got Linux Mint installed. He's got all the programs he wants, except no programs installed except for Google Chrome because that's really what happens. So in a way you can now, you've got GNU slash Linux, right? And now you could just call it Google slash GNU slash Linux Mint because that's really what's happening here. Let's be honest about it, it's no point pretending. And of course, Bob knows that everything's just working and Linux, he's, Linux Mint, he's been told everything just works. It all looks familiar to him. So Bob is happy. Bob will probably install, Bob will probably install Linux Mint now. So congratulations to Bob. It's 2025. 
your old ThinkPad is now running Linux Mint, you've got the Google Chrome web browser, there's nothing else you need, everything you need is right there. So um, there you go, that's the reality. That's what's probably gonna happen. A handful of people will not stay on Windows 11, they will not get a new computer. Their ThinkPad or their old laptop, let's be honest about it, their old laptop or desktop computer is now just gonna be a Google slash Linux Mint machine. That's that's the Linux desktop 2025. Google, I mean, it's kind of that already. Let's be honest about it. Anybody who you know does Linux Mint for their family, they know this is really what it comes down to. This is the way the world works, and it's not a bad thing for Linux technically, um, but the way of the world. Okay, so um, there we go. So I hope that just put you in the mindset of a new Linux Mint potential user who's come from Windows has n isn't really so tech interested or savvy or whatever you want to call it just knows enough knows what they want and the obvious thing is they're going to install Linux Mint they're going to install Google Chrome browser and they're probably going to be okay they're probably going to be okay and they're just going to have their work laptop their Windows laptop for work so so We'll leave it there. We'll let you ponder what I've just said. You can obviously like, you can comment, and you can subscribe and tell me what you think about the Linux desktop in 2025 and laugh at Microsoft for their TPM nonsense. So uh, we'll leave it there. <laughs>